Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you an adventure, comedy, crime film from 1994, titled Baby's Day Out. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Bennington Austin Cotwell IV, better known as Bink, is the son of Lorraine and Bennington Austin Cotwell III, a couple of socialites that live in a mansion in a suburb of Chicago. The person that spends the most time with him and actually knows him well however, is his nanny Gilbertine, a very caring woman that is willing to read him his favorite book, Baby's Day Out or as Bink calls it, boo-boo over and over even if she's tired of it. Today, Bink is getting his picture taken so he can appear in the social pages of the newspaper, since Lorraine has been feeling they've kept their baby hidden from their friends. While the mother and nanny get the baby ready, the photographers are ready to go as well, but they encounter a problem when a trio of criminals ambush them. Eddie, Vico and Norby grab the real photographers, tie them up and leave them in an old abandoned warehouse before taking their uniforms in their van so that they can pretend to be them. When they arrive at the mansion, their act is believed with no issues, so they take out their equipment as if they were going to take the picture for real and ask the mother for some time alone with the child, because if she's there, she may distract him. Lorraine looks a bit skeptical, but Eddie gets her to leave when he points out her outfit is not adequate for the photograph. The servants leave with her to help her find the right dress, but before doing so, Gilbertine gives Eddie the book in case Bink gets difficult. With everyone gone, it's incredibly easy for the criminals to steal the baby and escape through the window, where their van has already been parked. They change vehicles midway though, leaving their disguises with the photographer's uniforms and equipment behind in exchange for their own van. Lorraine finds a note left behind telling her not to call the police, and Bennington comes back from work after receiving a note asking for money as well. The cops and the FBI soon arrive at the house and start their investigation, stopping Lorraine just in time from going out there and searching for the baby on her own, which could be dangerous. Meanwhile, the criminals are in their secret hideout, the last floor apartment of a tall building with a huge clock on the front. After changing Bink into less flashy clothes so nobody can tell he's a rich baby, Norby takes him to the bedroom and reads the book to him, trying to make him take a nap, but he is the one that falls asleep instead. Bink looks through the book on his own and notices there are birds outside the window just like the ones in the story, so he crawls out and uses the fire escape to climb to the roof after the birds. When he finds a skylight, he looks through it and sees Eddie and Vico in the room, gaining their attention when he spits on them and giggles. The criminals panic and go after him, only to find him crawling on a wooden board to reach the other roof where the bird has flown to. Eddie comes closer to grab him and ends up being hit by the board when the shift of Bink's weight makes it move up and down, and seeing it as dangerous, Vico throws the board away after Bink makes it to the other side, eliminating the chance for them to follow him through the same path. The trio decides that the roofs are close enough to each other to jump. Norby and Vico manage to cross over, but Eddie is still dizzy and falls on an alley dumpster. Meanwhile, Bink makes his way inside the building, reaching an apartment and managing to leave it when the owner opens the door to the mailman. They're too busy talking to each other to notice him crawling around their feet until he reaches the elevator, which he rides to the ground floor before finally leaving the building. Norby and Vico rescue Eddie out of the trash can just in time to see Bink get on a crowded blue bus because it matches the one in the book, so they hurry to get into their van and follow him around town. The bus driver notices them and drives away from them, losing them for a couple of blocks until the trio manages to find a way back into the main street, stopping the van right in front of the bus when it stops to let a big lady out, who carries a bag where Bink has crawled into. Norby talks to the driver and asks about the baby, but the driver just takes off. While he calls the main office to see if there are any reports of a missing baby, the trio sees the big lady walk behind their van and notice Bink comfortably sitting in her bag. They start following her, trying to think of a way to take Bink without her knowing, but she does notice them and proceeds to drop her things in order to beat them up. Scared of her strength, the criminals run away while Bink takes the chance to crawl out of the bag and enter a department store. There, he's found by the employee in charge of the mall's daycare, who thinks Bink has escaped her facilities. She takes him with her and leaves him with the other kids after changing his diaper, but Bink escapes again by climbing into another baby's stroller when the mother comes to pick her up. After drinking all the juice from the other baby's bottle, Bink waits for the stroller to stop and climbs back out, making his way to the doors and waiting for an adult to open them so he can go outside. On the streets, a reporter is already covering his kidnapping on the news, and he crawls past her when he sees a taxi, which also reminds him of his book. He causes the reporter to drop her microphone and the cameras are on him for a second, enough for the criminals to see him on a shop's television. They rush after him but they don't make it in time, Bing crawls into the taxi and looks at them through the window as the car drives away. In the meantime, the Cotwells receive a call from a man claiming to have seen the baby and go check it out. The man points at an apartment after getting some money out of them, but it was of course a lie, it's a random baby belonging to a perfectly good woman. When the taxi parks to drop off its passengers, Bing crawls out and sees the zoo across the street, which also is in his book. The criminals arrive then, having followed the taxi with their van, and see him cross the street without any issues. They try to do the same, 
but it's more difficult for three grown men to be ignored by the cars, so a vehicle ends up driving over their toes, causing them to run away in pain and fall into a ditch. After they get out, they enter the zoo and follow Bink's tracks on the dirt that take them to the ape house, where Bink is contently sitting inside a cage with a gorilla. This gorilla likes the baby and treats him as if he were its own, feeding him fruits and keeping him safe. It isn't as nice however, when Vico puts his arm inside the cage to try to grab Bink, the gorilla just watches him for a few seconds before coming closer and smashing his hand with its fist. Their next idea is to use a mop they find nearby, Norby sticks its handle inside the cage and puts it through Bink's clothes to pick him up, but the gorilla quickly notices and takes Bink back before hitting Norby with the mop. Afterward, they wait for the ape to fall asleep, and now it's Eddie's turn to try to get the baby out. At first, it seems he's successfully bringing Bink closer, but the gorilla wakes up, grabs Eddie, and furiously tosses him against another cage after roaring on his face. At that moment, the zoo opens the back of the gorilla's cage so it can be in the outer area for a while, giving Bink the opportunity to safely escape. While the Cotwells find Bink's picture on the paper but not in the way they wanted, Bink hangs out in the park, watching all the other kids play and have fun. He starts crawling away again when the criminals arrive in their van and start following him, almost catching him before he goes through some bushes and a tunnel three grown men can't walk into. The trio runs to the other side park and waits for him to come out of the tunnel at the other end, grabbing him right before the police arrive. Playing the innocent bystander card, they sit on a nearby bench and hide Bink between Eddie's legs, covering him with his jacket. The cops start asking questions about their van and a missing baby, and Eddie tries his best to answer them while squirming in pain because Bink is hitting his groin and even lighting it on fire after he finds a lighter in one of Eddie's pockets. Norby and Vico take the cops away with them to show them something about the van while Bink leaves the lighter on the bench and climbs down from Eddie's lap, who can't stop him from escaping because he's going through excruciating pain. When his two friends return, they throw him on the ground and put off the fire by stomping repeatedly on his groin. Back in the house, Lorraine approaches Gilbertine, realizing she's the only one that can understand how she feels. While they bond over their love for the baby, Bink is making his way to a construction site, followed closely by Vico. Bink sees a worker's donut and wants it for himself, so he climbs on a steel beam to grab it, not caring about the fact he's now being lifted with the beam to the highest floor of the building. Eddie and Norby join Vico then, and together the three of them ride the elevator until they reach an area the beam hasn't passed by yet. The idea is to jump on it and retrieve the baby when the beam finally reaches their floor, but the plan doesn't go very well, when Vico jumps on the beam, his weight causes it to tip down and Bink to slide off until he lands on the elevator roof. As he crawls inside the building, Eddie and Norby try to help Vico, who is about to lose his grip on the beam. Norby tries to grab him to bring him back inside, but he slips and ends up hanging off the beam with him for a moment before he loses his grip and falls on top of some wooden boards. This movement is enough to give the steel beam a push, and Vico manages to jump back into the building, landing on top of Eddie. Norby isn't so lucky though, he slips off the wood only to land on another steel beam before falling again and landing inside a vat of wet cement. Eddie and Vico try to follow Bink around while avoiding the workers, but Vico does as well as Norby does, he tries to jump back on the elevator, but he hits his head a couple of times and in his dizziness, he ends up falling off the building and landing in a dumpster. It's up to Eddie now. He comes incredibly close to Bink and is about to catch him, but he slips on some drool the baby has dropped, causing him to fall and hit his head with a hammer. When he tries to get up, he holds onto a hanging rope for support, but pulling it proves a mistake when it turns over a vat that showers Eddie with glue. This slows down his walking since he can barely take a step without slipping, and it gives Bink enough time to crawl away and get onto a moving platform that takes him back down. Desperate, Eddie sees the moving hook of a crane and jumps on it, thinking it will also be lowered to the ground, but at the moment, the workers reach the end of their day and leave the site, so Eddie ends up stuck on the crane watching the sunset. One of the workers sees Bink crawl out of the construction site, but the idea is so ridiculous he blames it on his imagination. The criminals give up on the baby and decide to return home. The FBI visits the Cotwells to inform them of all the places where Bink has been seen through the day. Gilbertine immediately puts two and two together and realizes he's following the journey of the book, so the last place he'll visit has to be the old soldier's home. The family and the cops drive there and effectively find him among the elderly, who are singing a song for him. Once the family has reunited, they all get back in the car together with the FBI agents, and when they drive through the highway, Bink recognizes the building he had been kept at because of the clock outside. He starts pointing at it and calling it Boo Boo, which indicates the adults' his book is there. The FBI turns around and after calling for reinforcements, they surround the building and, and man the criminals to surrender and return the book. Eddie has no other choice but to toss at them the book through the window before he and his companions put their hands on their heads, waiting to get arrested. When the family returns home, they follow the ending of the book, which consists of putting the baby to bed. Once his parents are out of sight, Bink goes to his shelves and chooses his next favorite, Baby's Trip to China.
Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.